that. And then I kind of, you know, kind of left that scene and, and, and kind of was out of music. And then when we met Marcus, like we really weren't in the scene at all. So for us, when we met him, then we were just like, oh, he's this guy's, this guy's cool. We had like, what was cool, we didn't have no idea who he really was. Yeah, so it was very organic. He mentioned that he had been wanting, he had this idea and wanting to do a uh, remake of uh, Kate Bush song, Running Up That Hill. And I was like, oh, that's, you know, an epic song. I love her. And he was like, well, do you want to try it? <laughs> and so. Yeah, this guys went out to get takeout and they left me in the studio. So I just put down a little piano um, track of the chord progression. And then they came back and Bev went in the vocal booth and just laid down a bunch of vocals of the song. And then Marcus just like, yes, yes. He So he took that, he built the track and then sent me the track. And then at our home studio, we recorded the real vocals and Bev just did all the vocals at home. And then we just sent them back to Marcus and, and he mixed them and, and built his track and, and loved it. And, and, you know, really liked working like that. So we collaborated probably on, on like two or three of the songs on um, Dakota. The Night Me, Skies. Yeah, yeah, The yeah. Night Skies. We, we collaborated some of the music on that. And then he, he had, they were in the studio mixing and he's like, I need someone to narrate. So he's trying different voices, different people to narrate. And he's like, Bev, I like your voice here. Read this. I'll read this. And so she read it and he's like, I love this. Can you narrate this whole thing? Mm -hmm. like, okay. So he would just send us paragraphs of things he was writing for that project and we record them a bunch of different ways and do things and, and he sent them back to him he chopped it up and he made that whole record with Bev's voice and everything. Yeah it was a it was a pleasant surprise to be able to be such a big part of that project. Well I thought it was great because what like I saw him debut it at one of the dream states I believe a few years ago. Yeah and we were yeah, and uh, what was cool about that whole thing was that it was like the first time an artist in that arena had any kind of like narration and it, and it added to the whole theatrical part of it. And it was just, I loved it, but a lot of people looked at me and were just kind of dumbfounded and they, they had to kind of like grasp yeah. it over time. <laughs> so I think that's really cool. I think it was really a cool concept but I don't know if people were quite ready for it because it, it was, I mean, it touches on a lot of heavy subjects. Um, you know, you go on a journey of, it's a whole story going on. And um, yeah, you have to kind of watch it after, I think, to really understand what, what it's all about. But. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things where the universe just kind of converged to make this cool thing yeah. because, because we're not super, you know, like in that whole scene, we don't know, but we totally connected with what he was trying to say on that and the message of it and, and what was going on. It just felt it right and it. this just happened. It was just good. And, and I had so much fun in the studio with him because it was just great to be hanging out and listening to the way he writes and what he does and how he puts his thing together. And it was cool. I, I learned a lot from him. And, um, he, you know, he took some things from us and, and in between working, we jam 80s tracks and dance around the room you know we, we, we there's many times just all you know all of us just dancing and yeah, just listening just to 80s, 80, 80s songs like <laughs> like imagine marcus schultz dancing to madonna well <laughs> yeah well when him and i had spoken in the past he's talked about his favorite track is actually pet shop boys so he loves the 80s um yep. and, and you can kind of hear it in a lot of even the trance he produces. So I think that's awesome. So cool. So I know I've teased it a, enough for the listeners that will be listening to this podcast, but I really want to talk about your new tracks because you have two versions, one that you've released with Omer, which he's a, he was actually on this podcast early as well. So we go back. So it's cool that you collaborated with him and his label. And then I love the house version that you released as of, well, recording it the day after, but also so let's just talk about kind of after my listens like I said I saw I felt the kind of Duran Duran 80s vibe that you guys have talked about yeah. um so the I just love the the way you guys did the vocals in it um because it kind of touched on like Depeche Mode and, and Simon Le Bon singing so talk about 
of why you guys wanted to release two versions of the track? Um, well, the, 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 this version that's just ours, we actually had that version a while and we, you know, loved that version of it and did it. And one thing that that song kind of features, you say, with the vocals, you know, Bev's got her own thing as an artist, you know, Bev Wild, she can sing with anybody and do her thing. Me as a vocalist, I don't really have that many um, as just a vocalist, but something really cool happens when Beverly and I sing together, like just the way our, uh, the timbre of our voices just uh, meld together, especially like when you're singing low parts. Sometimes you can't tell if it's Bev's voice or my voice. So we just have this cool sound that we get together. So we wanted to feature that on this, that song. So it's really just about getting that sound. And, you know, we, we finished it, but we also wanted versions that were more clubby or, or dancey or, or, you know, stuff that you can play at festivals. And that's not what we do, but we have lots of friends who do. So we just sent the vocals to Omer because Bev had worked with him on um, In Dreams with Danilo. And he loved it and he just built his cool track all around that. And, and, you know, we love that. And it just happened that, you know, he wanted to release our version as well as his version on, on his label and, you know, put his out, he put his out first and it just sounds great. Made a cool video with it. And then just followed it up with just what we do. So it's just kind of a cool piggyback thing rather than just making our sound, clubby and festival we just do our thing and then our friends exactly. our friends can tweak it and make it their thing and what i love about that is just hearing how someone else interprets you know what we've already done it's really cool like we'll send tracks to like like joel mentioned danilo omer and some other friends that we have here that that mix and they'll you know just do a completely different thing with it it's so cool to hear you know yeah, I, I enjoyed both versions because even though the vocals are the same, it's the way Amir did it versus your your version. And I mean, it's it's like you mentioned, you guys. I mean, you you, you like trance, but it's not kind of the era and kind of what you guys are used to. So having that your version, it, it kind of speaks to that as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There's nothing better, like, like, don't get me wrong, like, there's nothing better, especially when you're surrounded by tons of people, your friends, and then, like, this drop hits, and, like, this epic synths come on, and you get goosebumps, and you're just like, yeah! <laughs> I mean, there's just nothing better. Like, that's trance for me in that whole world, but, like, as an artist, it's just not me to do, like, that all the time, but, like, those moments that trance captures is the best. Like, it's the best vibe. Yeah, and I think we've come to realize that our strength is in melodies and, right? Like just yeah, more traditional pop, songwriting. Like pop almost. And then to be able to give it to someone like Omer and he does what his thing is what he does well. And it's just a cool collaboration. Yeah, and, and like for me, like especially with, with these songs too, I have a tendency st stylistic wise I don't know if it's being ADD or whatever, but I have so many melodies, so many parts, so many things that I just, I put in our stuff we do where that doesn't fit in trance words. Yeah, <laughs> a kick drum, a vocal, and a cool synth, and you got, you got yeah. your trance track. Right. Like I, 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 like I said, I, I'm a huge trance fan, but I'm also, I love house and I love techno. And I, I, Lately, I've been really into like what they call progressive, right? Just the lower BPMs and mm -hmm. like your your tracks and and some others that are being released. So, so you mentioned that you guys are getting into re-releasing some tracks you've had from the past. Uh, are you looking to eventually do an album, or are you just going to continue like EPs or kind of? Uh, our goal. About... It's Go just. Ahead. Like, you know, not, rather than doing a whole record, like a whole album, we kind of just have this plan to release one song every couple of months. And then like, every, you know, every now and then doing remix, having friends do remixes of, of those songs. And then at the end, like in a year from now or wherever, just take that whole collection of songs and put it out on an album because it just works better 
one song right now for just, you know, because people's attention span is just crazy short. So doing a whole album just doesn't feel right right now. It just feels better to just get a song, a vibe, and then move on to the next song and vibe. And then the next, and plus time-wise, we don't have the time to do a whole, we know what it takes to do a whole album of like 10 or 12 songs. It's just so much time. So we just focus on yeah, the, you we know, have day job, so we, <laughs> we, we can't do that right now. We couldn't do it justice, but you know, we do what we can. That was, it was cool when we, um, we started out the first release, Libertine. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that track, but um, we, that was like the first music video we've ever done as well. 